beloved within the church, the young prophet from Judah was called to give a challenge message. Just like Jeremiah was called in his day to give a challenge message. He was called to rebuke the sins of Jeroboam in his day. Jeroboam was an anointed king that took the ten tribes of Israel, the northern tribes, and was a despot king. He had calf worship. He anointed the lowest of the people to be the priests of the high places. He allowed Israel, the northern tribes, to worship idols, worship calves, golden calves, and to commit sexual orgies under the calf. What are sexual orgies? Sexual orgies is fornication and adultery with temple prostitutes and to worship in behalf of the sun god of Phoenicia, Baal. So Jeroboam was a Baal worshiper, a sun worshiper. And the calf symbolized that sun worship. He said, these be your gods, O Israel. These be your gods, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. When God said, I am the Lord thy God that have brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Daniel and the three Hebrew boys knew about that God. They knew about the true God that brought them out of the land of Egypt. When the three Hebrew men were worthy on the plains of Dura, they would not worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Because they knew about the true God, the true and living God, the one that made the heavens and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters, beloved, in the Adventist church and other Christian denominations out there like the Baptist, Lutheran, Methodist, Episcopalian, Catholic church. Now, the young prophet from Judah was called to rebuke those sins. Judah was, was, was the southern tribes. Those two tribes were um, Judah and Benjamin. And the king over that nation was Rehoboam, Solomon's son. Rehoboam's son, the people revolted from him because he said, my, my fingers should be thicker than my father's thigh. He wanted to control all the nation of Israel, the southern and northern tribes, with a, with a firm hand. And the young people said, look at this young whippersnapper. We're not going to listen to him. And they said, to your tents, O Israel. And that's when Jeroboam took the northern tribes of Israel, the ten tribes. And Rehoboam had the two southern tribes, Judah and Benjamin. Well, the man of God saw, when he came up to Jeroboam, he saw that, that false worship. And he, and he didn't even address the king. He addressed the altar. He said, oh, altar, altar, upon these south." The bone shall be burnt. The bones of the of the men of the high places, the priests of the high places, and when he did this, the king he 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 lifted up his scepter of authority against this young prophet from Judah, and he said, "Get him to his men, to his so to his soldiers or his police force of that day," and his and his hand dried up. His hand dried up, beloved, and when he did that. The, the young prophet walked away, and the king said, Come pray for me, young prophet. Come pray for me. I'm embarrassed right now because my hand is dried up. And the young prophet prayed for him, and his hand recovered. Oh, because uh, James says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth as much. Not a man who's given to apostasy. Not the priests of the high places. The priests of the high places cannot heal the hand, beloved, within the Christian church and other uh, churches. Even within, in the Adventist church that are practicing all this ecumenicalism, such as Sunday surge and women's ordination, new theology. So, beloved, when he prayed for him, his hand came back. And when, and when his hand came back, he said, come home with me and eat bread. And I will give you a reward. He said he wanted to make him a priest of the high places. No longer a prophet to rebuke apostasy, but a priest of the high places. A pastor of his day. A priest. A priest of the high places. In the, in, in, in the church of his day. The, 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 the northern tribes. The seven day of his church of his day. 
level within the Christian church and denominations of the truth and other in other in other Christian denominations that are in spiritual Babylon that are apostate daughters and you know what when he did that beloved within the Christian church he said I'm not going to go home with you because God has told me not to go in with you or drink water here or eat bread in this place now he knew the word of the Lord he knew that ecumenicalism that dispensationalism, that um, that uh, that cultural relativism, that new theology, that sin and live theology, that 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 evolution, all of those teachings that come out of spiritual Babylon and her apostate daughters, all those teachings that come out of Atheism and secularism was not his role to practice. He was to worship the true and living God. The one who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. He was to worship Jesus Christ. But there is but one medium between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus, beloved. That's who he was to worship. He knew. He said, for God had said. He knew he was not to go home with that, that king from, from, from Israel, Jeroboam. So he left. Upon leaving, the, the prophet from the king from the northern tribes, uh, Jeroboam, a, a old prophet found out that he had come in and his ecclesiastical jealousy was aroused. And his son said, where did he go? And so his ecclesiastical jealousy was aroused. He went to the young prophet and said, he lied to him, he said, guess what, young prophet from Judah? My, my credentials are from the Babel up uh, from Jerusalem University, see they're uh, up to valid, up to valid, and up to date. I've graduated from Jerusalem University, just like Oakwood University today. I'm a minister, and and an angel came to me and told me you should worship on Sunday, have Sunday search practices, women's ordination, synonym theology, um, ecumenicalism in the in the Seven Day Adventist Church of his day. You should um, practice all these evils again and be promoted and be a priest of the high places. An angel came to me. And the young prophet came home, ate bread and drunk water in the place of the old prophet. And, and in the old prophet, when, when he saw the young prophet come home with him, he said, for as much as you have come home and eaten bread and drunk water in this place, thy carcass shall not Come back to the sepulcher of thy fathers, he told him, when he was eating bread and drinking water at his place. So the old prophet wanted to be gratuitous for this young, disobedient prophet. And you know what he did? He got his own ass, as, as the Bible says, or his own donkey, as modern translation says. He mounted him up on it, put him up on it, Got a coat to, 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 to figure it up. And he, and he said, alas, my brother. See, when you're not following God, all the, the old prophet can say is, alas, my brother. Alas, my brother. He knew something. He knew that all that was waiting for him was judgment. Alas, my brother. And while he was on that donkey, that ass, as the Bible called in 1 Kings 13, I read the Bible to you to fix it so you can see what it says. And it came to pass after, this is 1 Kings 13, 23. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. 1 Kings 13, 24. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him and his carcass was cast in the way. An ass stood by it and the lion stood by the carcass. And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where he had the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, you said, it is the word of God who was, who was it was the man of God, sorry, the man of God who was disobedient to um, unto the word of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord 
hath delivered him unto the lo the lion which have torn him and slain him, and according to the word of the Lord which he spake unto the unto him. So beloved, but in the Christian church and in the Adventist church and to all this ecumenicalism, if if you're a young minister like myself, beloved, if you're the young prophet from Judah and you're preaching against ecumenicalism, pseudo Sunday Sunday secular practices such as Sunday surge, new theology, we can't overcome sin. Jesus Christ is not in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, blotting out sin, investigating character, and making the, and doing the atonement right now since October 22, 1844. If you're preaching, uh, a tr this, if, you're, if you're not preaching these straight testimonies, the reforms, health reform. Dress reform, education reform. You're teaching. You're 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 teaching from pagan infidel authors. If you, it, 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 Sister Wise's book of education, he says our ideas of education take too broad and narrow a field. If you're teaching, um, um, postmodernism, cultural relativism, saying that whatever right is right in your eyes. And whatever right is right in my eyes. If you're teaching that you can disobey the word of the Lord and still be saved. And that woman can still preach and teach. When the Bible says, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over a man. 1 Timothy 2.12 If you're teaching all these apostasies, beloved, within the Adventist church and other Christian denominations. Sunday secular practices, sin and theology, woman's ordination, woman teaching. Um, ecumenicalism. All churches just want to get along and, and dance in church or listen to worldly music. If you're teaching these, these doctrines for the commandments of men, 1 Timothy talks about those doctrines. They were the same practices such as spiritual formation that were taught to uh, in Jezebel, with Jezebel's being taught on Jezebel's table. Like a minister told me today, a very prominent Present true seven evidence minister said, Lucius, you can't break the Sabbath. You can't canvas on the Sabbath. It's the appearance of evil. First Timothy chapter 4, look what it says. It says, Now the Spirit is speaking expressly that in latter times some sort of power from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience sealed with the hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God had created to we receive with thanksgiving. Uh, and them which believe and know the truth. Now also, Second Timothy chapter 4 goes deeper into that. Second Timothy chapter 4 and um, verse 3. For the time will come when they so will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they ha heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. So, beloved, they shall teach for doctrines the commandments of men, teaching um, commandments of men. Woman's ordination, that's a commandment of man. There's no scripture in the Bible that says a woman can be a pastor. The Bible clearly states the bishop needs to be the husband of one wife. I'm not even qualified to serve as a bishop being single, educated or not, at Oakwood and church leadership like I am. If I'm the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of rider and really Titus 1, 5, and 6. And if I'm, um, um, and if I'm, um, have the, 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 the spiritual qualifications of a bishop or an elder, that qualifies me at that time. Degree or no degree. So, beloved, the degree simply is a cultural, um, qualification as a minister or a um, political qualification but the Bible is clear the Bible and the Bible alone qualifies you those qualifications in 1 Timothy 3 1 to 7 Titus 1 5 and 6 the Bible also says in 1 Corinthians 14 34 and 35 it clearly says this it says um, it says let your woman keep silence in all the churches for it is commanded unto them not to speak so that will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. So if a woman will learn a doctrinal issue when the pastor has talked about it, let her ask her husband or her brother or her father at home. Don't let her try to usurp authority and try to teach herself. 
Now, beloved, that's biblical. That's a Bible. Do not try to usurp Bible authority, beloved. Teach the Bible. Isaiah 3, 12 to 15 clearly says this. It says that a judgment of God is that the woman will be the rule over the men and the children will be their oppressors, beloved. Don't go, don't go against Scripture. So follow the Scriptures, follow the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. But the young prophet from Judah was destroyed by the lion in the way because he listened to the old prophet. He ate bread with him and drank water in that place, trying to become a priest of the high places, and he was destroyed by the lion in the way. Most congress and father, please bless your people. Please save them in your kingdom without the loss of one. Please let them read the Bible and sister wives writing to themselves. Please let them be convicted by the truth. Please let them be overcome by truth in these ass days. Please let them um, forsake sin and confess their sins so they can be sealed for the latter rain and be able to be translated. Please let them not be given to cultural relativism, new theology, ecumenicalism, woman's ordination, Sunday sacredness, which is Sunday surge, on all these apostasies that are lost in these ass days. In Jesus Christ, my prayer, amen. Maranatha, God bless you, beloved. You have a wonderful Thursday evening.